Hello, this is Christopher Howard, and welcome to my talk, Informal Reference Tracking. This is a workflow talk, so I need to explain a little bit about what my needs were. I'm not a professional scholar or academic, but there are a number of subjects that I'm interested in, and I occasionally like to write Gemlide posts about them. So I needed some way to keep track of references, references to web page articles, references to books, pages and books, and uh, notes about them, something that was searchable, but also something that was quick and easy to use, and something that I could set up quickly. And the approach I took only took me about an hour or two to figure out how to put it together. I do want to emphasize uh, that there are better ways to do this. I'm not recommending you use my code or follow my exact approach. Um, in particular, uh, what I'm doing was meant to be done with org's built-in uh, capture and templates functionality. So that's something that's more flexible, programmable, and um, there's also a lot of add-ins that can be tied into that. Uh, for example, tools that allow you to uh, search for... Um, you know, feed in a, a URL and it automatically pulls all the reference data for you. And uh, there's tools out there that are really meant for scientific writing. So if you're if you do this professionally, uh, you may need to keep track of dozens of details for each reference and then have some fancy system to uh, to generate that into your uh, or output that into your paper. So there are better systems, but uh, this is what worked for me and what was easy. I do want to emphasize that uh, if you if you haven't, um, you really want to you learn how to use Helm mode, H-E-L-M, or one of the similar systems in Emacs that does uh, fuzzy search on commands, on Emacs commands. So, for example, in Helm here, I input one key chord sorry input one key chord and then I just have to remember a few characters of some command and they don't even have to be right next to each other like HOC will bring up Helm occur that's based on uh, its algorithms of what I most likely meant and the ones that I've used in the past so it usually brings up the command that I want uh, or the one that I want is uh, one or two spots away in the entry. And that just saves me a lot of time, a lot of memorization. So if you haven't learned Helm or a similar system for Emacs, you really want to. But so uh, what is my approach? Well, basically what it comes down to is really uh, fundamentally nothing more than just a list of org entries uh, in a file. And there's one uh, entry per reference. Fundamentally, that's all it is, uh, but I'll go over the parts. You can see there's uh, the title for the entry, and uh, that's not necessarily the title of the, the book or the article, uh, but that's my perspective on it. That's what I want to remember about it and what I'll be looking for later when I do a search on my references. Um, there's also in here the use of org's uh, tags here to the right of the title. Very handy uh, for searching for entries later. And I use some org properties attached to each entry. So I automatically add in here an ID that can be useful if you want to link entries together later. I automatically add in here the date that the entry was created, which can be useful to me uh, if things got sorted in a different order at some point. I could still look through the most recent entries that I had made if I wanted to do that for some reason. And sometimes I add in this uh, publication here field with the idea that one day I might want to do a search for entries based on uh, the publication year of the book or the article, say, uh, only to use recent references, something like that. 
And then down here below the properties is where I paste in the URL to the web page or type in the title and author of the book or the pages, maybe the pages that were relevant or the pages of the periodical or something like that. And I could put anything that I want down here, some other notes about what's important about this article to me. So fundamentally, that's all it is. Of course, I've added in a bit of convenience code uh, to make this go a lot faster rather than typing all this out. And for that, I'll switch back to my init.l file. And for that, there's really just five functions. The uh, first two here are ones that I've adapted off the internet. Honestly, I can't remember exactly where that I got them from. But basically, they're just some functions for making a block of text writable or readable. Uh, writable or not writable, I should say. And uh, <clears throat> the idea there is that I can, uh, when I'm creating a new entry, I don't want to accidentally uh, delete or write over some earlier entries that I've made. So I use a little bit of uh, uh, Emacs functionality for that. And then here are the three uh, reference functions that I've actually written. Very, uh, really trivial, basic stuff here. Uh, the core of it is the new reference, uh, the new reference function. And basically what that does is it opens up the references file, jumps to the end of the reference file, starts a new entry, it inserts the asterisk, it jumps back uh, to the previous text, and whatever previous text there is, it makes that read only. Again, so that I don't accidentally delete that or cut or uh, type over it or something when I'm making a new reference. Then it goes back to the new reference, automatically adds in a unique ID for that, and then automatically uh, stamps it with the date the entry was created, today's date. Now I've got two other uh, two other functions here. Uh, one is view references, which does nothing but open up the reference file and switch to that buffer if you're not already on it. And then there's one other here, uh, edit references, which does the exact same thing except for it also goes over all the text in the buffer and makes it writable. So if I really do want to edit those other references, I've got a function to quickly make that possible. So let me give an example of this. So I type in here, new reference. Now I've jumped to the end of my references file. See, it's ready to take the title. So, well, I guess I need to have something, uh, some content to put in here. So let's say I was looking through LFeed. And let's say I found this uh, interesting article about Mars earthquakes. And so let's say I open it up. I read through the article. So first I'd figure out what, what it is that I find interesting about this, what it is that I'm going to uh, want to remember and look up later. So I can come up with a quick title based on that. Go back to the references with view reference. And let's say, um, just call it study of Mars earthquake. Now I'm going to uh, also want to put in some tags. So on my system, that's uh, done with control C, control Q, and I can put in some tags. I like to uh, go ahead and insert the colons. You can leave those out, but they're going to get added anyway, so I'm in the habit of using them. So uh, let's say this, we'll call this astronomy as one tag, and the next tag could be uh, planets. If I wanted to use a tag that was more than one word in the tag, I'd need to use underscores or something like that. So uh, if I wanted a tag that was Mars earthquakes, I could do it like that. 
but that's kind of silly. Now I try not to be too clever with the tags, not spend a lot of time thinking about them, just come up with some general buckets to throw things in. And you can see the tags were added there to the right of the title. Now you can see down here under properties, the ID has already been added, the date created has been added. Uh, sometimes I'll like to put in the publication year, and for that I use the org set property command. Publication year, this year in this case. And then I just need to paste in the URL. So I do that manually. I use org's uh, brackets, uh, bracket format for that. So I start that, go back to the article, copy uh, the URL, paste that in. If I want, I can add it in the title with the second uh, pair of brackets here. Don't have to, but often like to. Close that off, and uh, there it is. That was really it. I add a return on the end here just so the next entry comes out with the right spacing. But uh, really, that's it. And uh, typically, when I'm not explaining it, uh, that only takes, you know, 20 seconds or so, or 30 seconds. Um, pretty quick. Pretty easy. So what about searching later? Well, really the easiest thing, often the easiest thing, is just do a simple uh, boring in incremental search. So I could just, I usually know roughly what it is that I'm looking for already. So I could, uh, if I was looking for that wildflower article, I could just do a search for, incremental search for wildflowers and jump through that. It's pretty simple, um, not very impressive, but uh, honestly, most of the time that gets me there pretty quick. Uh, sometimes I find it useful to do an occur search, more specifically a helm occur search. So if I use the helm occur command, then I like to use this to search by tag. That's where it really becomes handy. So let's say uh, I want to narrow it down to all my astronomy references, and then uh, narrow it down a little bit more to uh, planets. So I can put spaces in between and it still works. And you can see here in one window, it gives me the bottom window there. It's giving, uh, just because of the way the tags are formatted with the title, it gives me a list of all the titles that have that tags. And I usually find what I want pretty quick by just uh, tapping through here. Once I find uh, the one that I think I want, I press enter, and now I focused on just that, uh, just that entry. There is some advanced functionality, I believe, uh, that I used in the past where you could search based on the property fields. So do something like search for uh, publication, the most recent you know, publications in the last 10 years. I, there's some kind of uh, advanced syntax for that, I, which I used once or twice. Uh, honestly, I use that so infrequently that I have to go back to the Emacs manual and figure out each time and figure out again uh, how I did that the last time. But since I do it only once every you know, three or four months, it's not a problem. And so I'm not going to go over that today. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, again, the code that I wrote, this specific approach, is not really what I'm recommending. Uh, but, uh, you know, here it is if you really, if you really do want to use it. Uh, maybe I can uh, make a link uh, to the URL a URL and share that in the chat room or something. Uh, but it's I consider this to be trivial code. Uh, so just use that if you if you want to use it. But so uh, I should be uh, signing off here now. Uh, I should be in the chat room uh, in the IRC chat room, uh, or you can reach out to me by uh, email if you'd like.
Thank you very much.